and one of the most popular movie stars ever to come out of Hollywood. And Lara... I don't care what you saw. There is a Santa Claus on the good ship. Lollipop, it's a sweet trip. Shirley Temple was no ordinary actress. She was the youngest sweetheart, a little superstar and a symbol of hope for a country dealing with economic hardship. But just like other infamous celebrities, critical acclaim and immense popularity didn't spare Shirley Temple of the burdens of high expectations. I make them jump right through a hoop, throw animal crackers and mice. Too. Difficult work hours and a fair bit of objectification. Shirley, however, bravely smiled for the cameras and continued to dazzle the audience. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at who Shirley was in real life, her struggles and her untold secrets. Here is Shirley Temple and who she was when the cameras stopped rolling. Early Years Shirley Jane Temple was born on April 23, 1928, in Santa Monica, California, to a family with Dutch, English, and German ancestors. Shirley and her two brothers, John and George Jr., were the proud parents of Shirley and her mother, Gertrude, who took care of the house, and her father, George, who worked at a bank. Later, the family relocated to Brentwood, Los Angeles. Shirley's mother saw her daughter's abilities and encouraged her to pursue singing, dancing, and acting. Shirley's hair began to be styled into the characteristic ringlets that would become her hallmark about the same period. Shirley got the attention of Charles Lamont, a casting director for educational pictures, one day while attending a dancing school. Lamont was impressed by what he saw and invited her to an audition. In 1932, he signed a contract with Educational Pictures. Shirley featured in a series called Baby Burlesques, in which she appeared in 10-minute comedy shorts that parodied recent films and events, with preschool children playing various roles. Shirley was a bar singer in Glad Rags to Riches, a satire of a Mae West picture in 1933. She also appeared in Kid in Africa, where she played a toddler in Danger in the Bush, and Runt Page, a satirical take on the front page from the previous year. The young actors were required to memorize and recite their lines phonetically. Shirley swiftly rose to prominence as the series standout, stealing people's hearts with her charm and brilliance. This was only the beginning of her incredible adventure in the entertainment industry. Career takes off. Jay Gorney, a lyricist at Fox Film Corporation, spotted Shirley Temple dancing in the theater foyer after seeing her in one of her Frolics of Youth films. Excited by what he saw, Gorney arranged for Shirley to appear in the film called Stand Up and Cheer in 1934. Her audition on December 7, 1933, got her the position, and Fox guaranteed her $150 per week contract for two weeks. Shirley's charm and brilliance shone through in this performance, which changed her life. Fox executives were so taken with her that they pulled her into corporate offices immediately after she charmed spectators with the song and dance performance, Baby Take a Bow, which she performed opposite James Dunn. Shirley's parents noticed she wasn't being paid fairly after the success of her first three films. Furthermore, her image appeared on a variety of products without her permission or remuneration. Shirley's parents hired lawyer Lloyd Wright to manage her image and negotiate with Fox. On July 18, 1934, her contractual income increased to $1,000 per week, while her mother's compensation increased to $250 per week, with a $15,000 incentive for each completed picture. To stop the improper use of her image, cease and desist letters were sent out, and authorized business licenses were issued. Bright Eyes, which was adapted to Shirley's acting style, debuted in 1934 and featured the popular song On the Good Ship Lollipop. Shirley got a small juvenile Oscar for her performance in 1935. Her weekly pay had risen to 2,500 by the end of 1935. Heidi, a 1937 film, featured a dream sequence added midway through production. Although Shirley allegedly championed the sequence, she strongly rejected it in her memoirs, emphasizing that due to her contract, she had little creative control over her films. In 1939, Salvador Dahl painted Shirley in Shirley Temple, the youngest, most sacred monster of the cinema in her time, and she appeared in The Autograph Hound with Donald Duck. After leaving the 20th Century Fox, she signed with MGM in 1940. However, her discussion with MGM producer Arthur Freed took an unsettling turn when he exposed himself. Because of this incident, their contract was terminated before any films were created. Better than Mickey Mouse. Shirley Temple's success extended beyond the screen. She became a fashion icon and a retail sensation. 
In fact, she was the most popular celebrity endorsing things for both children and adults, surpassed only by the renowned Mickey Mouse. Her influence went beyond entertainment, making an indelible mark on children's attire. Shirley created a specific toddler look for girls aged 2 to 12, altering how children dressed in their 1930s. The ideal novelty and toy company's line of Shirley Temple dolls was one famous expression of her marketing success. These dolls were so popular that they accounted for over a third of all doll sales in the country at the time. However, the dolls were not the only successful Shirley Temple merchandise. A variety of girls' outfits and other things bearing her picture rushed off the shelves, making her a consumer goods trendsetter. However, not all products bearing Shirley's likeness were legal. To capitalize on her celebrity, counterfeit items flooded the market, ranging from dolls and clothing to accessories and even cigars with her likeness on the label. Despite this obstacle, Shirley elected not to pursue legal action against individuals manufacturing unlawful goods under her name. She stated in her autobiography that pursuing legal action against such ventures made no economic sense. While Shirley Temple did not pursue every counterfeit product, legal action was taken in some cases. Ideal Toy Company filed a victorious action against the Lenora Doll Company in one prominent litigation. The latter had been producing and distributing unlicensed Shirley Temple dolls, with the legal paperwork even naming Shirley as a co-plaintiff, emphasizing her famous status, misconceptions. Despite her immense popularity, Shirley Temple's time in the spotlight was not without hardship and the propagation of false tales. At the height of her celebrity, she became the target of numerous misconceptions, many of which were promoted by the Fox News Department. Fox depicted her as a natural talent, despite the fact that she had no professional acting or dance experience. They said she spent only two weeks at the Elisa Ryan School of Dancing to explain her competence in stylized buck and wing dancing. One particularly strange and persistent false allegation claimed that that Shirley Temple was a 30-year-old dwarf rather than a child. This myth, spurred in part by her stocky body type, forcing the Vatican to dispatch Father Silvio Massante to investigate whether she was indeed a kid. To add to the uncertainty, some argued that she couldn't be a child because she never seemed to lose any teeth, giving the impression that she already had her adult set. The reality, however, was quite different. Shirley was losing her main teeth on a regular basis during her stay with Fox. During the sidewalk ceremony in front of Grauman's Theater, she deflected attention away from her face by removing her shoes and planting her bare feet in the concrete. Meanwhile, when she was acting, she covered the gaps caused by her missing teeth with dental plates and caps. Another legend said that Shirley Temple's teeth had been purposefully filed down to give the impression of baby teeth. These fictitious claims about her age and physical appearance caused unneeded stress in her life. Despite the difficulties, Shirley's performances continued to enchant audiences, exhibiting tenacity in the face of false rumors and maintaining her image as America's sweetheart. Her hair. Shirley Temple's famous curls were the subject of one recurrent myth, with whispers saying she donned a wig. This myth gained such hold that fans would boldly tug her hair to verify its veracity on many occasions. When Shirley reflected on these occurrences later in life, she expressed a nostalgic wish that the only problem she faced was wearing a wig. The reality, however, was far from straightforward. Shirley's nightly habit of curling her hair had become a laborious and arduous task. Contrary to popular belief, her curls were meticulously maintained each night. This entailed enduring a series of duties, including weekly vinegar rinses that irritated her eyes. Her signature curls required more care than anyone could have anticipated, turning a seemingly simple haircut into a nightly effort. Another myth that spread was about Shirley Temple's hair color. Contrary to popular assumption, her blonde hair was not natural, according to murmurs. The rumors peaked during the filming of Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, when it was revealed that she would be shown in extended scenes without her distinctive curls. Shirley suffered a cold during filming, prompting her to miss a couple of days, adding to the conjecture. As a result, a bogus rumor originating in the United Kingdom claimed that all of her hair had been cut off. The suspicions regarding her hair color's authenticity not only spurred discussion about her looks, but also brought an extra layer of stress to her life. 
Shirley had to deal with not just the responsibilities of her cinematic career, but also the constant scrutiny and speculation about her personal characteristics. The difficulties she encountered behind the scenes were in stark contrast to the public's perception of her as a carefree, charming kid star. These allegations regarding her hair, whether they were about a wig or the color, underlined the common misconceptions that come with celebrity. Disturbing work. Shirley Temple's career in show business began at the age of three when innocence was intended to flourish. Not known to her, the industry was quickly robbing her of her youth. In 1939, she began her career by filming her first project, Baby Burlesques. The content, ostensibly a collection of comedy videos, shows a distressing tale devoid of humor when viewed through a modern viewpoint. War Babies, a particularly unsettling episode of Baby Burlesques, featured Temple in an inappropriate role. In order to attract the attention of army officers, she performed a provocative dance, exchanged kisses for lollipops, and referred to herself as expensive. However, the film's unease did not end there. The lack of laws behind the scenes meant that directors could use whatever tactics to control their minor performers. According to historian John Casson, director Charles Lamont, who oversaw Baby Burlesques, used frightening ways to discipline his young cast, including Shirley Temple. While the film's attempted comic appeal, the reality behind the scenes was bleak. Misbehaving youngsters were locked in a soundproof black box, an eerie container housing a block of ice, as part of Lamont's punitive measures. Shirley Temple received the same horrific and claustrophobic punishment, underlining the terrifying surroundings that lay below the comedic facade. Shirley Temple found herself powerless in the face of such unpleasant circumstances, at the mercy of director Charles Lamont. Outsiders ignored her charges, accusing her of lying as Lamont had uncontrolled power, crafting the tales of the young actors as he saw fit. Temple recalled Lamont's severe pronouncement, This isn't playtime, kids, it's work, which served as a startling reminder of the hard truth lurking beneath the surface of entertainment. Lamont's demands were unreasonable, requiring Temple to dance despite an ailing foot and despite having ear surgery the day before. Though the gravity of baby burlesques may have eluded Temple at the time, she later commented on the series in her autobiography, Child Star, calling it a cynical exploitation of our childish innocence. This open revelation exposed the dark underbelly of the entertainment industry's treatment of child stars, exposing a stark contrast between the public image and the terrible realities that the young performers confront. Shirley Temple's experiences served as a sobering reminder of the vulnerability and exploitation that many young actresses face in the chase for fame. Diplomatic Career Shirley Temple, the beloved child star, did not limit herself to the glamour of Hollywood. She also became involved in politics, becoming a member of the California Republican Party. Consider this, it's 1967, and a special election is being held in California's 11th Congressional District. Why? Because J. Arthur Younger, the eight-term Republican incumbent, died of leukemia. So Shirley decides to give it a chance, running as a conservative Republican in the open primary. Politics can be a crazy ride these days. Shirley, what about her? She received 4,000 votes, or around 3% in her independent write-in campaign. So, while Shirley Temple did not win the congressional seat, she certainly left her stamp on the political stage. However, Shirley's effect was not limited to politics. She became involved in public affairs through the Commonwealth Club of California, a forum in San Francisco. Shirley didn't just attend meetings, she spoke at many of them throughout the years and even served as president in 1984. And now, for a shocking twist, Shirley has entered the realm of diplomacy. From August 23, 1989 to July 12, 1992, she served as the United States Ambassador to Czechoslovakia, nominated by President George Bush. She created history by being the first and only woman in this position. Her time in Czechoslovakia saw some watershed moments. She was in Prague during the Soviet invasion in 1968. On the day the tanks arrived, she was in Prague to meet with Czechoslovakian party head Alexander Dubek. She sought sanctuary on the roof of a hotel after becoming stranded and witnessing a horrible event an unarmed woman on the street being gunned down by Soviet forces. This terrifying image haunted her for the rest of her life, 
Shirley later witnessed the end of communism in Czechoslovakia as an ambassador during the Velvet Revolution. She actively supported anti-communist dissidents and was instrumental in establishing formal diplomatic relations between the United States and the freshly elected government led by Václav Havel. She even joined Havel on his first official visit to Washington, traveling on the same plane as him. Shirley Temple, the child actress who became a diplomat, had an everlasting effect on history married the wrong man. Shirley Temple met her future husband, John Ager, in 1943. They decided to get married two years later and soon became parents to a girl named Linda Susan. It appeared to be the ideal family, especially when Agar began acting and appeared in pictures with Temple, such as Fort Apache and Adventure in Baltimore. Behind the scenes, however, this seemingly perfect marriage turned out to be a real-life disaster. Shirley Temple created a devastating portrait of her relationship with John Agar in her autobiography. Despite the initial I do, their relationship quickly deteriorated. Agar, it turns out, was a terrible spouse. With a significant drinking problem, he not only physically assaulted Temple, but was also repeatedly unfaithful. This was hardly the fairy tale happily ever after that anyone had dreamed of. Temple and Agar's twisted romance lasted for five years. Temple reached her breaking point in 1949 when she bravely filed for divorce from Agar, citing mental cruelty. She wanted to shut the chapter on this horrible period of her life by gaining custody of her daughter. The horror appeared to be coming to an end. Her past, however, came back to haunt her in a surprising way decades later. Following Shirley Temple's demise in 2014, a troubling 500-page FBI file on her surfaced. A frightening surprise was disclosed in the contents. Temple's nomination as a UN ambassador by Richard Nixon in 1969 marked a dramatic shift in her career toward politics. Her ex-husband, John Agar, on the other hand, nursed deep hatred and sought small revenge. When the FBI began investigating Temple for the position of ambassador, Agar's accusations were nothing short of heinous. He refused to speak on her behalf, calling her emotionally unstable. Furthermore, he said that she would overreact if things did not go her way. Despite Agar's efforts to undermine his ex-wife's new job, his efforts were ultimately ineffective. True love. Shirley Temple's cinematic career was at its peak, but simultaneously on the decline when she was 22 years old. The once adored child star had matured into an adult, even bearing the burden of a divorce on her shoulders. With her shining days behind her, Temple chose to say goodbye to performing and embrace retirement. However, a silver lining arose in the midst of this transformation. The same year she decided to leave the spotlight, fate introduced her to Charles Black. Their relationship got serious fast and the couple decided to tie the knot after a whirlwind affair that lasted only 12 days. They had no idea that this union would last for the next 55 years, remaining firm until Black's demise. Relationship with children. She was more than a name, she was an icon, a woman who left an indelible impression on both the political and Hollywood stages. Shirley, before her untimely death a decade ago, was a force of nature, adorned with many titles that spoke eloquently about her accomplishments. She died 10 years ago, and now her children confirm the rumors about her parenting style. Despite being a celebrity since childhood, Shirley didn't mess up her children's lives. Neither did she subject them to the pressure star kids often face. Susan, her daughter, remembers Shirley as a multi-dimensional personality and not just her mother. The memories return, particularly those shared moments of laughter and joy when decorating the dining room. Susan depicts Shirley not only as a public figure, but also as the heart and soul of their home. Being a wife and mother is her proudest achievement, Susan says. The mother-daughter team was more than just family. They were inseparable companions on shopping trips and travel excursions. Shirley, as Susan describes her, was not just a parent, but also one of her closest confidants, a friend who infused their lives with love, devotion, and generosity. Shirley's only son, Charles Jr., joins in, reflecting the sentiments of a wonderful mother who transcended her public character. He recalls family dinners, a simple yet poignant practice that embodied the heart of their togetherness. The only time I noticed her star quality was when someone else would ask for her autograph, Charles Jr. continues, underlining that she was not a celebrity to him, but rather a great mother. Shirley's star quality, it appears, shone brightest within her family's close circle. Reflecting on Shirley's life, it is clear that she was not only a political trailblazer, but also a light of warmth and normalcy at home. 
Charles Jr. emphasizes her normalcy by saying, she was wonderful and normal. Shirley stood out as a mother who prioritized family dinners and cherished times over glitz and glam in a world when prominent personalities often appear remote. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Just like her career, Shirley Temple's journey as a mother wasn't easy, but the former child star went to all lengths to protect her children. She died 10 years ago, and now her children confirm the rumors about her role in saving her daughter Lori Black from addiction. Lori Black, who was Temple's daughter with second husband Charles Black, got hooked on narcotics after entering the punk rock scene of the late 80s and 90s. Unlike Susan and her brother, Lori had a difficult relationship with Shirley while growing up, but according to a source when the chips were down, Shirley helped put Lori in rehab and supported her recovery wholeheartedly. She saved her daughter's life. Reports say that Lori was hospitalized twice but struggled staying clean. In February 1933, she was busted for possession at the airport in Portland, Oregon. She was sentenced to two years probation, 120 hours of community service, and to pay a fine. The sentence also required her to attend therapy sessions three times a week and submit to random screenings. The court let her enter rehab in Northern California, where her parents lived, and Mother Shirley visited all the time. Lori definitely gave her mother a tough time, but Shirley's love for her didn't falter. Do you think Lori would have gotten better if it weren't for Shirley's support? Let us know in the comments below. Relationship with her father. Consider this. Shirley Temple, the legendary child star, finally looks into her bank accounts, expecting to find millions, but finding only $44,000. What may have caused such a startling revelation? Her own father, it turns out, had played a diabolical game. He allegedly failed to put her hard-earned money in a trust fund as he should have. It was a betrayal of the highest level, a circumstance that would enrage anyone. The twist is that Shirley Temple's reply was nothing short of astounding. Shirley selected a less frequented path in the face of her father's callous behavior. She replied with love and forgiveness rather than disappointment or wrath. Yes, you read that correctly. Shirley Temple stayed incredibly serene despite being wronged in a way that would make most people see red. There was a time when she said, for reasons some may find inexplicable, I felt neither disappointment nor anger. This revelation sheds new light on Shirley Temple's incredible perseverance and character fortitude. Instead of succumbing to bitterness, she chose a higher path demonstrating genuinely extraordinary grace. It says a lot about her capacity to face adversity with a spirit free of animosity. Shirley Temple's life was not all rainbows and sunshine, especially when it came to her wealth and the trust she placed in her father. Nonetheless, her reaction to the betrayal demonstrates her unbreakable character. Perhaps it was her inner strength that got her through the difficult years ahead. Shirley Temple emerged from deception and disappointment not as a victim but as a survivor, demonstrating a toughness that characterized her career beyond the flash and glamour of her on-screen success. Awards Shirley Temple made a lasting impression on Hollywood on March 14, 1935. At Grauman's Chinese Theater, she pushed her footprints and handprints into the wet cement. It's like a time capsule, recording a moment in Hollywood history when her star power was firmly established. Not only that, but she led the New Year's Day Rose Parade not once, but three times in 1939, 1989, and 1999. Imagine the applause from the crowd as she waved from the parade float, bringing joy to everyone. On February 8, 1960, she was honored with her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Shirley Temple has earned her place among the stars at a place where legends are forever. It's similar to a walkway of fame, commemorating the best in the entertainment industry. The compliments kept coming. The American Academy of Achievement presented her with the Golden Plate Award in 1970. That's a significant deal and honor for someone who has accomplished a lot in their industry. Shirley was also awarded by the Freedoms Foundation in Pennsylvania in February 1980 for her achievements. It's like receiving a big pat on the back for being a great citizen. Her influence, however, extended far beyond Hollywood and the United States. Shirley Temple was appointed Honorary Deputy Paramount Chief of the Ogwa people in Ghana in 1975. That is an incredible distinction, recognizing her as a leader in a community half a world away. Here's a nice twist. There's a Shirley Temple mocktail named after her. It's a sweet combination, albeit she found it a little too sugary for her taste. She even went to court to defend her name in 1988, when a bottled soda version attempted to capitalize on her reputation. It's the equivalent of declaring, hey, that's my name and I want it to stand for something good. And do you know what happened on June 9, 2021? Shirley Temple was honored 
honored with a special Google Doodle. It was the first anniversary of Love, Shirley Temple, a one-of-a-kind display at the Santa Monica History Museum. Consider the world's most popular search engine allocating a small creative space to this iconic figure. Demise. Shirley Temple was 44 years old when she was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1972. People used to speak about cancer in hushed tones to keep it a secret. Shirley, on the other hand, did something unprecedented. She spoke publicly about it. This was significant because it helped raise awareness about breast cancer and tried to remove the stigma associated with the condition. Shirley Temple, at 85 years old, passed away on February 10, 2014, at her home in Woodside, California. According to her certificate, the cause of her death was chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Here's an intriguing fact. Shirley had been a smoker her entire life, but she made a conscious decision not to smoke in public. Why? She didn't want to set a terrible example for her followers. Shirley Temple was laid to rest in Alta Mesa Memorial Park when it was time to say her final goodbyes. Her path, from openly disclosing her breast cancer struggle to confronting the problems, has left an everlasting influence on how we approach health issues. She not only danced her way into our hearts on screen, but she also fearlessly tackled real-life problems, establishing a legacy that extends well beyond the glitz of Hollywood. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.